marred by yet another tragic shooting or two or three, really a slaughter of our fellow citizens, my Republican colleagues are taking time to gesture instead of to act. The purpose of this markup is to show law enforcement, to acknowledge and give aid to those who we have entrusted with keeping our communities safe. My Republican colleagues haven't put forward anything to help police who are thrust into situations, perilous situations, facing down mass shooters with assault weapons, drug traffickers with weapons modified by stabilizing braces or bump stocks, or organized criminals with untraceable ghost guns. Let's do something about those things. No, instead, they want you to think they care this National Police Week. They've done barely anything to fund and equip our nation's law enforcement services. If the folks on the other side of the aisle actually supported law enforcement, they would pass and lead the House Democrats, who last year voted to pass. How about the Invest to Protect Act? Would have authorized $300 million in grants for law enforcement agencies with fewer than 125 officers. 55 Republicans voted against it. The Victim Act, which would have provided up to $100 million per year in grants to law enforcement agencies to help solve violent crimes. 178 Republicans voted against it. Or how about, remember when we passed the American Rescue Plan that delivers $350 billion across this nation to state, local, uh, municipalities, and tribal areas? 219 Democrats voted for it. 210 Republicans voted against. How about the Capitol Police Supplemental Bill, funding the Capitol Police following the attack on January the 6th? Wouldn't that just speak for itself? 213 Democrats voted for it. 209 Republicans voted against supplemental funding to the Capitol Police. How about the assault weapons ban, which would take the weapons most used to target law enforcement and these mass murders that we are seeing grotesquely blowing away our children. If you read the description of the most recent shooting, a person went over to help a little child who has been bent over almost prayer-like. When they lifted her up, she had no face as a result of an assault weapon. Do we want to do anything about that or we just want to pass feel-good resolutions saying, claiming we support the police? Instead, oh, by the way, the assault weapons ban, 208 Republicans voted against it. I guess they want to defend people blowing away our children, blowing off the face of a little girl. House Republicans have set their sights on defunding and abolishing federal law enforcement agencies. This is the hypocrisy. It's an oxymoron what we're participating here. Remember Chairman Jordan has said he wants to use the power of the majority to cut funding for the DOJ and the FBI. Matt Gates, Mr. Gates, the gentleman from Florida, wants to abolish the ATF. You all heard that right in this very room. That's the agency that every police department in this country counts on and uses to track weapons used at crime scene. Abolish it, say some members of this committee. This is simply not the work of sincere folks, not of serious legislators. That's, that's not showing care for our law enforcement communities, and it def definitely is not support for our law enforcement departments. And so, Mr. Chairman, with the remaining time I have, I say, please, I plead with all of you, take these issues seriously. Take the slaughter of the babies in our classrooms, in our shopping malls, in our synagogues, wherever it happens to be. Take this seriously. Act. Don't pass feel-good resolutions that are absolutely hollow, vapid. We need action. My constituents are furious at the refusal of the Republican Party to take serious action on gun violence in this country. We cannot and we should not continue to live and die this way. It'll only be a matter of minutes before we hear of the next grotesquely gruesome slaughter of our citizens. And I yield back. General Lady yields back. Mr. Tiffany, oh, Mr. Uh, Jordan. I thank the chair. I would just, just do a quick response, and then I'll be happy to yield to Mr. Tiffany, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman. An FBI that has, a, that has a field office 
the Richmond field office, which puts out a memo, and the memo says, if you're a pro-life Catholic, you're an extremist, you're a radical, and we're gonna look to put sources inside the parish, inside the church to spy on you, I do think we should evaluate how the American tax dollar going to that organization is being spent. That to me seems common sense. And we know that happened because a brave whistleblower came to this committee and said, this was going on in Richmond. Now, to the FBI's credit, they rescinded that memorandum, what they call a domain perspective. But would they have done that but for that brave whistleblower coming forward and telling us that? When you got that kind of activity going on and a host of other things that this committee has uncovered, I do think you have to look at the appropriations process and make a decision there. Maybe some of the tax money going to this organization should be spent a little differently. That's what this committee has said, a number of us have said. We're not for taking it away from the rank and file, the good agents on, out there in the field doing good work, but we are for looking at things like that and saying, maybe you shouldn't be getting all the money you're getting. Will the gentleman yield? No, I will not, not till will I the finish. the gentleman yield? I will not, 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 not until I finish here. That's what we're concerned about. But you read that memo, you read that memo, and it, it, they were looking to put sources, develop informants inside the church if you're a pro-life, pro-family Catholic. Will you yield Think now? about that. That is frightening. And, and, and remember, this was signed off on by five people in the Richmond field office, including the chief divisional counsel. In other words, a lawyer signed off on that, a lawyer who supposedly went to law school and had a course on the Constitution and the First Amendment. And they signed off on it. And the Democrats say, keep giving the FBI money. We don't care that that kind of activity. They rescinded that thing as quick as they could, but that was going on within the FBI. So heck yes, this committee should look at that. We have primary jurisdiction over the Justice Department. And we are doing that. We are doing that. But that is as wrong as it gets, a, as blatant a violation of First Amendment liberties. The first right in the First Amendment is your right to practice your faith. And the FBI was looking at putting sources in the church Mr. to snitch and spy on parishioners. Mr. Chairman, you've got to be yield? kidding me. Be Would happy you? to yield. Thank you very much. So it, it seems to me that it is very clear you support defunding the FBI. I didn't say that. I said we got to look at one of the things we do in this in this this business in this Congress is you look at how you appropriate funds and we will have recommendations going to the Appropriations Committee about how they should use American, the people I represent in the 4th District of Ohio, the numerous Catholics I represent in the 4th District of Ohio. They, ha they have a say in how their money is spent. We are certainly going to look at that. So if you don't want to, if you just want to keep sending money to the FBI that's spying on people in church, go right ahead and take that position. The Republicans on this committee will not, and we're going to look at it. You may not want to, but we do. We do. And I, I guarantee, I bet, you have, I bet you have Catholics in your district who want you to look at it. I know I do. And that's what we plan on doing. With that, I yield back to the chairman. I'd yield to the gentleman. I'm sorry. I'll yield back to the gentleman. I'll yield to the gentleman from Louisiana then. Mr. With, with the 90 seconds that remain, I thank the gentleman for yielding. I would just say, listen, we, it, this is not just 